So good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor to announce Alex Poetic Soul Johnson this afternoon. And before I introduce her formally, please stick around at the end of class for a group photo. So today, um, Alex is going to be speaking to us about some of her work. Some of her accomplishments include a teaching artist in Lafayette Parish Juvenile Detention Home. She is a featured panelist for the 2016 Split the Rock Poetry Festival in Washington, D.C. Her book of poetry called Poisonous Thoughts was recently published, and she leads Eyes of the Sun mural in Lafayette, sponsored by the 24-Hour Citizen Project. When I hear click clack clack, I think about my life. I'm hungry as a pit bull and money is like food. You never know how much you're gonna get and I've been stressing so much, I don't know what to do. What should I do, what can I do? Locked up like a caged wild animal. Aggressive as a volcano, I, I used to be in poverty, now people just think I'm infamous. Untamed, but my future is true and as bright as light, I gotta get my education, I gotta get control, can't let my anger get the best of me, but stress runs through my veins. And I smell fear in the waves in the ocean. I was on a mission from God, but I guess I failed. Stuck in my cell with accumulated thoughts, thinking about my next meal, and sometimes I wonder who really understands me. I get in trouble when I'm mad. They say that I'm insane because I'm walking through the rain, but you gotta walk through the rain to be cleansed from the pain. And sometimes I wonder who's gonna take that time with me. My dad was never there to watch my first fall. I know I come from a bad subdivision. A lot of pain and, and evil, evil thoughts, but this life is not a game. It's a blessing. And ambition is the road to greatness. Learning is freedom. And I gotta make it to college. People quit on me, but my faith keeps me rolling. So I strive hard so I can be successful despite my mistakes. I strive hard so I can be successful despite my mistakes. I strive hard so I can be successful despite my mistakes. Failure is not an option, but success is. And I testify from my heart that what I say is real. That poem is called Eyes of the Sun. It was written by youth incarcerated in Lafayette Parish Juvenile Detention Home. The poets that are responsible for this beautiful artwork, inspiring this beautiful artwork, Eyes of the Sun. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen a few images from the mural, correct? Or have you not? Yes? No? Oh, one thing. This will be as fun as you make it. If you don't have energy, then I don't have energy either, and then we're all going to die. <laughs> so let's not do that, okay? So have you guys seen any pictures from the mural other than this one? No. Um, this is what I run money for the 24-hour citizens project for. To, it's actually in two different locations. We have the Martin Luther King Center, which this part of the mural is uh, located on. Um, the Martin Luther King Center. Um, it's more of an art corridor because it wraps around the building to the other side and is on another side of the building. And then we have Meshes Donuts on Willow. Um, where it's everything that is meshes is painted. So we went in and just painted everything. And um, we installed the poem on the mural to inspire the community and to give back to our youth community for their investment in themselves. So they each contributed a line to this poem and helped craft it and edit it, and, you know, do all the tedious work to build it into what it is now. So this is one part of it, I think, I, if I just click right here, go to the next picture, right? So, um, this is on the Martin Luther King Center building. Um, again, all inspired from the poetry. So, I wanted you guys to kind of experience what we go through in class at the Juvenile Center. Um, you guys ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The process of, of what we went through to uh, write this beautiful poem and to self-express, you know, because I, mean, I dealt with a lot of students from very atrocious homes. One of my students 
witnessed his mother being killed. You know, as an example, I had another 11-year-old that shot his dad with a shotgun. At 11 years old, he killed his father. Um, so that's the mindset that we're, we're dealing with in class. So now we need to break through that. What's your favorite color? My favorite color? Yes. Blue. Why do you like blue so much? It's very calm. Why do you need to be calm? Because I'm very anxious a lot. I worry a lot. Is being anxious something that's a problem in your life? Take it in What does that feel like? Pretty relaxing. Relaxing like what? Lazy relaxing, I guess you could say. Lazy like what? Be specific. I'm going to challenge you. Um, right. Not thinking. Anybody else play bar street tacos? They're okay. Why is this okay? Are you hating on the tacos? Why is this okay? That taco is mediocre. It is mediocre. Like, I gotta have, I like like it stuffed, like I like everything, and I like it seasoned the right way. So what does that taste like? Tastes like flavor. Tastes savory. Okay, so the couple right here. <laughs> well, she wanted to speak earlier, so I have to give her a chance. And then I'll go to another part of the room, and I'm just going to pick you at random, so just be prepared. What does being anxious remind you of? Like a certain event, or... It starts to make me think of my future. What about your future? I don't remember we're locked in the classroom in the gym. Um, so your future is, is a how, big... How will my plans change based on what I'm being anxious about? How will your plans change? Let's just say you're in a stressful situation. So um, how will your plans change based on that? based on your, your situation becoming more stressful, harder than what it is now, less privileged. How will my actions affect uh, my circumstances? How will your actions affect your circumstances? Yeah. That makes you anxious? Yeah. What does that smell like? Anxiety smell like? Smoke. What does defeat smell like? Smoke, yeah. Smoke. Smoke? Kind of like bloody. Like, it smells like blood. Okay. So, what do iron tacos feel like? Tell me a time where you felt heavy in front of you. Um, I, uh, 
about heavy during the test. All right. So now I want you to think about what he just said. Think about your own thoughts uh, of what we talked about. We have the word on the board, and I want you to give me at least four lines from the poem. Okay. Yes. Yes. We can use other words as well as these words, yes. or just only these words. Yes. No, this is the only language you can speak forever. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you can use other words, you can use these words. I just wanted you to have some kind of inspiration to get, keep your thoughts rolling. If you have any questions, let me know. It surrounds me. My calm and relaxing nature has now been erased and been replaced with a heavy feeling in my chest. There is no hope nor future. I become overwhelmed. I have been stuffed in an iron maiden, confined to an everyday silent sound. My freedom has gone out of the window. Inside I feel hollow, and as if gray couldn't get any grayer, a detrimental feeling of decay erodes my mind. As I'm chained to my subconscious, I wonder, will you know how to respond if I lose control? Do you write poetry? Yes, sir. grows heavy, a path lightly tread. Iron shed chains my gray, sins haunting my head. Smoky land surrounds, flooded hollow time. Darkness holds its cast, change that need no light. But brightness keeps my gaze, I will not die. If I lose control, my faith shall still fly. If I lose control, I could flash out. If I lose control, I could be silent. If I lose control, the flooded cell stuffs the future. The book is questioned and changes. Yes. 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 Smoke is in the air and blood is on my tongue. My mind feels heavy, but there are no thoughts. Hollow silence dragged down by chains as blue calm fades away, if I lose control. So, um, anybody else want to share before we go on to the next part? If I lose control, I have no thoughts. God help me to relax if I lose control. Hollow, empty, and shameful is what I feel if I lose control. Bloody, smoky question is what I'll be if I lose control. Silence is loud if I lose control, so God help me to relax if I lose control. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? Or any questions for uh, Keenan? Yes. Yeah, well, I guess this is for both of you guys, right? Like, so with being incarcerated, I'm, I'm sure that I can imagine that you know, self-preservation is important, right? You need to protect yourself. That, that's a, you know, a major concern. Um, and part of self-preservation is, is not appearing weak, right? You don't want to appear vulnerable. You don't want to appear weak. Um, but with poetry, a part of it is, you know, you're showing that leader side, right? You're showing that vulnerable, a vulnerable side. Um, so, it, I guess this kind of builds up, you know, builds off their questions as well. Is that you know, what are some general strategies and, and maybe dealing with you know um, that sort of you know, that wall that we put up um, to kind of you know break that down a little bit to, to get people to express themselves. I think um, my answer to that, to that would be using a co-creation of value strategy because it allows people to be in control, and usually that's the, the biggest. Uh, elements that the person doesn't feel like they're in control, so they, they withdraw, you know, so allowing them to be active in, uh, allowing them to be a part of what we're creating, to be in control, you know, I think that's a big, big element also. Okay, when you finished, um, do you, did you feel like it helped you, or do you feel like it hurt you more than it helped you? The first three times I feel like 
this ain't this ain't doing nothing. Like, what you supposed to be learning out of this if I'm going to get out in a week? Mm -hmm. That's how I felt. After the fourth and fifth time, I was like, man, I'm getting out in a week. Got out in a week. So I'm like, man, really, if I keep going over here, I'm going to go back home on house arrest or probation, which is not really teaching me nothing. Until the sixth time, it was like, well, they tired of me. They tired of seeing me in the courtroom. I got to go sit down for three years. Boom. So as I'm sitting down, a month goes fast, I'm like, man, I could be on the phone, everybody telling me what happened, all they how much fun they have, and I just be on the other phone like, man, I don't want to do this, man, I'm not even out there. <laughs> man, but that's how it is, man, you gotta, you did the time for your sake to do crime, man. You gotta sit down and do all that, you really get mad, some people get mad over a phone call, your people don't answer, you get mad over that, basically some stupid stuff we would get mad for. I feel like, what is JDH, what is we getting mad for? We ain't going nowhere. We can't, you, ain't, you ain't killing nobody. All y'all gonna do is fight, then get separated. Y'all still gonna be mad, wanna fight, and can't get to each other. So basically, why is we all in here beefing with each other if we in the same spot? Well, thank you guys for having us. I really uh, enjoyed myself. Um, thank you guys for allowing Keenan to join us as well. Thank you guys so much for having us. That kind of concludes our presentation.